Alrighty, welcome to another Interp series lecture video. My name is Xavier Liu. I'm one of the Interp coaches at Bellarmine College Prep. And today, our lecture will all be about how to write an OPP, or Original Prose and Poetry. Let's get started. So here are the initial steps. So steps that you should be taking uh, two to three weeks uh, after you decide that you want to start writing an OPP. Your first step is to brainstorm different topics or themes. A lot of OPP speakers tend to have topics that are either social justice issues or related to their identity. So for example, if they're part of the Black community or Asian American community or identify as a sexual minority, um, many OPPers tend to take those uh, themes, those identity-related topics, and sort of embody their OPP, write an OPP about what they have had to go through um, as being a part of a specific uh, racial, uh, ethnic, or sexual minority. The more specific your themes, the better, um, or the more specific your topics, the better as well. Um, for example, you don't want to just write a speech on being an Asian American or having a mental illness, right? The reason why you don't want broad, uh, broad topics is because it's really hard for you to then go in and explore or delve into a specific a theme or a specific topic. Uh, you don't want your speech to be so unspecific to the point where uh, judges and audiences don't really know what's going on. So you want to hone in on a specific uh, topic uh, within a theme that you want to develop. So for example, you can combine both mental illness and being an Asian American by writing about mental illness within Asian American households within the United States. That would be an example of a specific topic using two different specific themes uh, that you can develop and write your OPP and center your OPP on. The last thing I'm going to say about this is that the more topics you have, the better. Don't be afraid to explore. Don't be afraid to write down topics or themes that you think you may not even want to do. Um, at this point, start by just writing down and tossing as many ideas out of your brain as you physically can. So include so many different topics, so many different themes that you may not actually write about. Just keep on dumping them. Next, you want to start brainstorming dramatic plot structures. The dramatic plot structure goes like this. So you want to start by having some sort of teaser or intro. Then you want to move into the exposition. The exposition is basically where you get to go more into depth about your character, explain your character a little bit. Then you have some sort of conflict or an inciting incident, which leads to a series of events, uh, the rising action, that get intense, more intense over time. This leads us to the climax, which is the most exciting, the most intense part of the speech, before finally hitting the falling action, uh, which is a series of events that takes us from um, the climax down towards the resolution, which is where you end your speech. So taking the topics, taking the themes that you've listed in the first step, you want to then start coming up with specific plot structures. Uh, so jotting down a story idea, story lines that you can follow. And you want to be as specific as possible. You want to start thinking of different characters. You want to start thinking of different settings, different conflicts. So taking the example that we listed in the first step, so if you want to explore mental illness within an, Ama an Asian American household in the United States, for example, you can have a daughter and a father. Uh, the daughter has depression. Uh, the father sort of ignores this. Um, does that then lead to a you know, more uh, climatical part of the speech where the daughter tries to commit suicide or run away from home? And then this sort of ends perhaps with the father vowing to never ignore her her mental illness again, uh, spending more time with um, his daughter, right, as the resolution. You want to be as specific as you can. You want to think of different characters, think of different settings, right, um, within your speech. And then lastly, this is more so towards the end of uh, the three weeks or the end of the two and a half, two weeks that you spend uh, thinking about different topics or themes. You want to start, you want to choose a specific topic or theme. You don't need to decide on a specific plot structure yet, but at least at the very minimum, choose a specific topic or theme that you want to center your OPP on. Then you will get into drafting. So after you sort of decide on your topic, after you decide on your theme, 
you want to start outlining and deciding on the plot structure of the speech. This is where you want to now make a decision about the dramatic plot structure itself. You then also want to decide on whether or not you want to use po prose, poetry, or both. Um, because this is the only event in which you get to uh, write your own speech and block out your own speech, you want to be very cognizant of which, whether or not prose, poetry, or using both would best uh, allow you to perform uh, your own speech. So if you decide, uh, like many speakers do, to just use prose, that's also that's totally fine. But if you want to use both or you want to center yours more around poetry, that is also okay. And then you want to start drafting. The first thing I'm going to note about your drafting and what you should be doing when you're drafting is you should be writing like you want it performed. Um, you want to think about how the, how the words on your script or in your script and how the words on the document that you are writing uh, will eventually be performed in front of an audience and in front of a judge. The other tip that I'm going to give is that you want to always write more. You can always cut down at the end of a day. But remember, you can't add in something that you didn't write, right? So you want to make sure that you write a little bit more so that you can cut afterwards. Next, if your OPP is going to be more dramatic, include some humor at the beginning. Um, the reason you want to do this is because, you know, a lot of uh, audiences and judges like to connect to specific characters, right? So even if you have a more dramatic piece, you want to make sure you have humor up front so that the judge can find some way to connect with your uh, characters. And then if you have a more humorous speech, you want to have some sort of dramatic effect. So something that the character has learned over time, a lesson that audiences and the judge can draw away from listening to your speech, you want to include that uh, more towards the end of your speech, have some sort of dramatic effect. Next, you want to show and you want to tell. Um, these are both English terms that you should probably be familiar with now. Uh, showing refers, again, more to the using elaborate sentences, using metaphors, similes to sort of paint this beautiful picture um, of the setting of characters, of the environment, etc. You want to be colorful. Um, and you want to make sure that your OPP reflects this sort of vibrant uh, writing that you want to share with your audience. But you also want to make sure that you are explicit at times. You want to be very clear to your audience about what is happening and what is going on. So at times you also want to be very explicit and you just want to tell the audience about what is happening. Uh, balancing showing and telling is super crucial to a strong OPP. Next, you want to avoid extraneous storylines and unnecessary characters. Um, as much as it, it would be cool to explore every little character trait or every little facet of your characters, um, you just don't have time uh, with 10 minutes to explore all of the storylines that you can possibly come up with, as well as include every character that your um, main character interacts with. So you want to be very smart um, about what storyline you choose to include, as well as what characters you want to include in your story, so they don't take away from the larger dramatic plot structure as a whole. Next, you want to include effective dialogue. Effective dialogue is basically narration or dialogue that moves the story along. Um, you want to, by the end of your piece, make sure that the character has grown in some way, shape, or form. That the audience and the judge understands how the character has developed over time, from the beginning of your piece to the end of your piece, right? Effective dialogue is a means for your character to grow over time. And you want to make sure that your narration, your dialogue, moves the dramatic plot structure along. Doesn't make your speech stagnant. And then last but not least, if you are writing your speech and you suddenly realize, you know, the inciting incident is way too long, the climax isn't where it's supposed to be, or the climax isn't as intense enough, then it's time to revisit those dramatic plot structures. It's, it's time to then revisit your characters, see if you need this character, um, what would happen if you would ax out a specific character or perhaps ax out a specific scene within the inciting incident, 
right? You can do that. Revisit those plot structures. Go back to the rheumatic plot structure that you had thought of and perhaps move stuff around or, uh, you know, ax out specific characters or include specific characters. Next is editing. So once you have that first draft ready, you want to then ask yourself in regards to characters and emotions, are my characters real and developing over time? Can my characters be streamlined or clearer, right? Are my characters confusing? Will the judge be confused about what's going on? Um, is the character stagnant? It, are they actually developing those emotions over time? Or am I just sort of getting really angry at one part and then really sad at the other and not really bridging the two emotions? Further, ask yourself, can I block or perform the characters I'm writing? Do, do their emotions seem real and genuine? Nothing is, you know, worse to look at than a speech in which the characters are boring, the characters are dull and lackluster, or, you know, the characters are super confusing and you just don't know what's going on, right? So make sure that you ask yourself as you're writing and as you're editing, can I actually perform the characters I'm writing? Or is this too out of, is this too out of my zone? Is this something that I just can't do? Next. In regards to plot structure, ask yourself, is the plot confusing to follow, right? Don't think from a perspective of you as the writer. Think of, um, you know, think of asking yourself this question from the point of view and the perspective of a parent judge, you know, at eight in the morning or at, you know, three in the afternoon after having judged, you know, three rounds or another round, right? Is the plot confusing to follow? What are some ways in which we can make things more clear? So for example, how can we make the climax, the rising action, the falling action, especially the climax, the most intense part of your speech, more clear, right? Is my plot something a parent judge can follow, right? And if it's not, then how can we edit um, that dramatic plot structure so it's more clear? And last but not least, word choice. Are the words that I'm using moving the plot forward, right? I talked about that effective dialogue. Am I, am I having effective dialogue? Am I including narration that moves the plot along? And am I performing something or am I writing something that I can perform out loud, right? Again, write the speech as if you would want this performed, right? And if it sounds weird or sounds awkward, then it's time to change um, that writing so it doesn't sound awkward and it more or less aligns with something that you can perform and you want to perform out loud. Lastly, we're going to talk about revising, finalizing, and blocking. Revisions. After each draft, check in with your coach. Incorporate the feedback uh, that you receive from your peers or your coach. And remember that this is a very long process. Don't be frustrated if you can't find the perfect sentence or can't find the perfect word or dialogue, right? Don't worry about that. Don't be frustrated with it. Trust in the process. Um, of checking in with your coaches and, and incorporating that feedback, we will get you where you are. Next, in regards to finalizing your speech, you want to finalize your script about a month, a month to a month and a half prior to the tournament date. If you're auditioning um, for travel tryouts using uh, an OPP, you want to then set that a deadline about again a month to a month and a half prior to travel uh, prior to the travel tryout auditions. The reason you, you want to do this is you want to give yourself plenty of time to practice. Um, we're going to be talking about blocking in a bit. You want to make sure that you have enough time to completely block out your speech and practice such that when you get to the tournament or when you get to the travel tryout audition that you are ready to go. And last but not least, we're going to be talking about blocking. So. Again, OPP is the only speech uh, in which you write your own uh, script and then you uh, get ready to perform it, right? You block it out. You want to be working with your peers and your coaches to block out your speech. You also want to make sure that you have enough time to practice, practice, practice. This is why, again, you want to set uh, your finalization of a script about a month to a month and a half prior to a tournament because you want to have enough time to practice. After the tournament, you want to then take the feedback that you are given and you want to revise your speech. You want to then go back to the editing table. You want to go back to the revisions and you want to ask yourself, 
okay, what worked, what didn't work, right? If a parent judge was confused about the climax or the rising action, why were they confused, right? And then change your speech such that that confusion is gone. So those were the sort of steps that you want to take when writing uh, and getting prepared to start writing an OPP. Um, as always, please reach out to your coach, your peers, uh, your junior and your senior captains, as well as your event captains. If you have any questions or are confused, we are all here to help you write your OPP. And that's it for this video. We hope to see you next time.